Hi guys, welcome to Witness Mom Minis. I'm Peter and today we talk about oil paints and what to do and how to do it and when to do it and what you need. People seem kind of afraid of oils, mainly because there is another thinner than water, mainly white spirit. And white spirit, it, it's not that hard to use, it's not at all hard to get a hold of. The only thing that you should keep in mind is that it should be an odorless one and that you should uh, work in somewhat of a ventilated area. So I got a big bottle at a local art store. Uh, it will last me a long time and then when it comes to cleaning the brushes uh, or working with oil paints I use one of these things. This is just two metal cups next to each other. I tend to put white spirit in each of them and when I work with the oils or when I clean my brushes I just use one of them to get all the paints off I then go and dab a brush on a piece of paper to see that the paint comes off and then I rinse the last of the paint off the brush in the last cup. And that cup should be basically just clear white spirit through the whole process and you know that you've done a great job cleaning those brushes. When it comes to colors there's of course a lot of different brands, there's a lot of different types. I tend to lean towards artist grey paints mainly because of the, the great pigments that is inside. There is pigmented colors that are exclusively for artist range paints, mainly because they vary that enormous in price, just yes, because the pigment themselves costs more. And I tend to, to lean towards these because when I use oils, I want to take advantage of the attribute that it brings to the table. I really want to use that long drying time. Having a long workflow with some pieces really gives you opportunities that you don't have with acrylics in the same way. And the glossiness, it doesn't bother me that much. I can, of course, just take that down a notch with a matte varnish at a later stage. With that said, there is a lot of uh, oil paints for miniature painting right now. Uh, some of them I do use. Typically, I would say that if you are starting out, you should go with an artist range or just a regular oil paint just to feel the difference that they bring to the table. With that said, of course, amazing things can be done with all of them. It's just a matter of trying out new things and getting better and better with your tools. So for washes, I usually use a shot glass. I used want to do one of them. I just throw some white spirit in there with the paint and then dilute it to the dilution that I want. But if I want to do a lot of different washes, that is, which is usually the case, then I will cover my plastic palette with aluminum foil. And when I'm done, I can just take that off and throw it in the trash. For painting, first of all, I tried a regular glass palette, a piece of glass. Uh, after leaving the paint on the glass for a day or two, or maybe three or four or five, <laughs> the oils had stuck on there, so there was a hard time getting those off. And being lazy as I am, I thought oh, I needed an another solution. Cardboard and baking paper, just taping that on and works just fine. The thing about this is that the, the oils that you get sometimes from the tube actually soaks in in the uh, cardboard, tend to get somewhat of a faster drying time. What I've ended up doing after seeing a video from Not Just Mecca, was to, to get palette sheets from Sister Nagrena. These are just regular coated papers made for as a canvas and you can just tear them off and throw them away when you're done. Works like a charm. So the first step of on any oil painting is to uh, do what is basically called a pre-glaze. So what we do is even if we have just primed the mini or if we have established some acrylics underneath, it doesn't matter. We just choose some of the colors and place them carefully where we want on the mini and then we leave the mini for 15 to 30 minutes. And when we get back to the mini after that, we will clean it up. This is one of the best times when painting with oils because when you clean this up with sponges and Q-tips, you will see everything that has been established underneath. First of all, of course, colors will stain very differently and you will get to learn the different color properties as you go on. Uh, of course, I do have my favorites. I might as well just mention them down below so you can pick them up if you want to use my favorite shadow colors or bright highlights. But with that said, it's important to not be too heavy handed in this stage because you don't want to take the, it all away. You need to have some of those colors left in the crevices of the mini to get that shadow for free that you just wanted. When you clean the mini with the sponges or the q-tips, even if it looks like you get all the oils off it, you won't. The only way to actually clean the oil completely off the mini is to use white spirit. So if you just use sponges and q-tips, even if it looks like you got it all away, you didn't. And that will work to our favor in the next step. Because when we go in with oils on top of this pre-glaze, 
then the oil color will have something to stick to and to blend to, and it works wonders. Okay, so basically all the brushes do work with oils. Let's just say, for example, what's the usual suspect in killing a brush when you're working with acrylics? Paint drying in the folio. Acrylics, they dry kind of fast and oils don't. So as long as you're very careful to clean your brush afterwards in white spirit, then you shouldn't have a problem. And the same goes here for like brush soap and things afterwards if you're using nice brushes. With that said, I would suggest that you don't use your Linsky Sables right away at least. Especially in the beginning, you tend to be kind of heavy handed with your brushes when painting with oils. All the brushes can be used, synthetics, stables, you name it, but Go slow and try what works best for you. You should keep your acrylics and your oil brushes separately. Like if you're a brush licker, you don't want to accidentally lick some cadmium poison. Uh, that wouldn't be that nice. And besides the main brush, then you will need your blending brush. This could also be any kind of brush. I usually go with these nail art brushes that I have. So they're rather small and that bristles are flat. Now that you have your pre-glaze set, it's time for painting. You take your main brush, you choose the color that you want to start with, and you put it all around the mini in the spots that you want it. Because we have that long drying time, we have that long working time, really go around the mini and see where we want to place that color. And there is actually rule in the book of waffle, if you know it, that says that if if a color goes somewhere, it should go everywhere. And that is to say, in nature, in real life, colors are very seldom just clean cuts. Colors do affect each other, so it's all about color harmony, really. So after you place the colors with your main brush, then you go in with the blending brush. This is this magic thing with oils. Even if you've been working with the main brush and placing out these different colors for I don't know, 15 to 15 minutes to an hour, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. You can go in there with the blending brush and you can just smoothen that edge out. You can do transitions between two different colors that you've laid down and yeah, everything is just a nice, easy sailing from here. Only thing that you should be careful with, the blending brush should never, ever, ever, ever touch the white spirit. Clean it on the paper. So things to think about. You have to plan ahead with oils in another way than you have to with acrylics. You do have some kind of flexibility with it, but because of all the layers that you put on each other will blend, it's always wet on wet. So if you don't want them to intersect with each other, if you don't want, let's say if you want a, a really clear yellow, be really hard to work up from a bright red because you will just, just mix in more yellow into that and make it more and more orange. If you want those blocks of colors, then plan ahead and leave stuff out so that you don't have to mix the colors that you have already set on the mini. All the colors you lay down will blend with the next color that come in on top. This is a strength if you know how to use it. So the next last tip is thin over thick and vice versa. Sometimes when you paint with oils, you will notice that the paint won't stick. It feels like it's sliding off or it feels, yeah, it feels kind of iffy and off. And have this rule in mind then it will eventually click. If you have put down a rather thick layer of oil paints, then you just thin the next layer down and go over and you'll see that it works just fine. And then you go in with a thicker and a thinner and a thicker and a thinner. Yeah, you get the point. I almost forgot the best part about this thing. So everything you just saw in the video, everything you saw me do and everything you're about to see in the reel, every smooth gradient was made in about 45 minutes and of course it being oils it will take a couple of days for it to totally dry but after that i could just as easily go in with acrylics on top and do like crisp highlights on all the edges and stuff of course there is a lot of things that you can do with oils so because of that i also will include some stuff that i've painted up in the past just to show you the pure breath of everything that you can do with oils so here we go Here's the reveal! So thank you guys, this was it for this time. I really hope I made oils less scary for you. I mean, it is just another medium to work with. I don't, I'm not saying that you should 
pick and choose whatever you work with. You could just as easily merge the both of them. They do have a lot of different advantages and flexibility with them. So yeah, don't be afraid to try it though. You never know what will fit your painting style the best until you try it. So if you want to support my work here, um, as some people crazily already do, and if you want to follow their example and support me in my work. If you like what I do, there is links in the description. There is all kinds of perks you get. If you want to get a sweet STL for my buddy Wiley over here. So with that said, thank you guys. Bye bye.